I've been working on this. Oh, hey, more people. There are a lot of people in here suddenly. Hey, thanks for following. You know, it, now that I got some more people in here, I get to do a little painting tour again. Um, so this is what I'm working on right now. I'm gonna add some, ooh, add some stuff up here. But uh, this is kind of generally my sort of style. I do fluid acrylics and then I do um, more acrylic on top later on. And sometimes they take me, you know, sometimes it's only weeks, but usually it's like months to years because I'll just sit with these canvases around the house um, or just in my studio and until they really strike me. Um, and then I know what to do with them. Like this one here, uh, I did the fluid background on it um, back when I lived in my last apartment. So that must've been like two and a half, three years ago. I painted the background and then now I'm adding in more on top of it, inspired by my recent trip to Mexico. So, that's kind of what's going on here. Hello! Hi, welcome! Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I must apologize though. I'm not at my, like, you, I don't know. If you've, if you're familiar with my videos, you probably know me as being a lot more chipper and um, just generally lighthearted, light-spirited and all that. Um, I'm, at, uh, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Focusing on painting and all that, but not quite where I used to be, so I must apologize for that. self-taught mostly through YouTube and just watch like observing other artists hello welcome you're witnessing the the birth of my twitch channel it's uh, not super hyped or anything just yet. This is just me getting, kind of getting used to being on camera live in front of people again. Um, it's been a while. And I, I, I was talking about this a little bit before. I, I deal with a lot of um, social anxiety, just general. I, I'm very much an introvert. Um, but I do want to be interacting with people online more, so I think this will be good for me. An English major vibe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a, a, a communications major. But I do a lot of writing now. actually working on um, getting something published. Um, there's an anthology that I'm working on with some folks uh, that I went to Oaxaca, Mexico with. Um, I'm working on an anthology. So pretty soon, Sierra Rhodes will be a, a published author. I've had some of my artwork published before under my legal name, but I've yet to do it under my name. Oh, you just dropped it. Oh. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that 
what's for the best for you, you know? Honestly, uh, I, I got a, I got a college degree, but it's, it was, um, a little overrated for, at least for myself personally, I haven't, I mean, I, I've used all of the knowledge, but I've yet to actually need the degree itself, so, you know, just the stuff I've learned in the classes was enough. Hopefully that's the way it is for you as well. My soon-to-be-published book, it doesn't have a name yet. Um, it doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, the, the piece that I'm submitting to the and oh, of my book? My book is going to be about my life. Um, because I'm, uh, I, I, a teeny ginger, so I, are, are you from Twitch or are you from my other stuff? Pranny. Pranny? Pranny? Oh! Well, how exciting! Uh, that's so cool. My other stuff, that, that is, honestly, that's awesome. So I've. I've been an, like a, a, I don't know if I could say that on here. I've been an adult, I know, this is so cool. Uh, I, I've been an adult entertainer for like six years now. Um, I, I hiked the uh, Pacific Crest Trail, the Colorado Trail, the half of the Appalachian Trail um, with money from, from doing adult entertainment. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> so I'm writing a book about my life, and no, no, seriously, th today is my first day on Twitch. I'm trying to, like, build a little following here, um, but as an artist, because I, I want, I want to just move into art, and eventually I wanted to do, like, some YouTube commentary stuff, um, but I just started a YouTube channel pretty recently, and, uh, uh, now I'm I'm here on on Twitch trying to I don't know do a new thing. I'm I'm technically retired. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I I I did the the all the, the thing for only your own the best of fans. I don't know if I can say that on here, but um, I I did that for a long time and. Now I'm retired, and now I do art. So, welcome everyone who is joining me on my new art journey. I hope you're uh, having a good evening. I know that I could probably be- oh, uh, I, I could advertise like, ah, oh, my first time on Twitch a little bit better, but I don't- I don't really want to just be bombarded by a bunch of people. I'd rather just kind of build a little bit of an authentic audience um, of people who are just, I don't know, chill people here vibing. But, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Kairos. <laughs> I'm glad that some people saw that. I wasn't sure, you know, I, you can never tell how many people actually, like, follow you and are interested in what you're doing and would follow you. Wait. No, no. Not on YouTube. No, that's, uh, I'm starting a YouTube channel now. It's new. As of, like, a couple months ago. But no, I'm, uh, just doing, doing new stuff now. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to keep doing video essays and storytelling on YouTube. Um, the art is more just like, I don't know, something I can do while I hang out and chit chat with people. 
uh, I, I have a lot of, um, social anxiety stuff that goes on. It's easier for me to be doing something while talking than it is for me to just be talking. Um, which is actually a big reason why I didn't show my face in a lot of my adult content. Because I, I, I find that I, I usually am making the wrong face at the wrong time, or I'm, I'm not looking where I'm supposed to be looking. So. My trip to Mexico was... Oh, man. It was really informative, and it was really good. I, like, I'm... I'm I'm really glad that I went to Mexico. I wish that I had gone just with my friend, because I, I went with one of my friends from Trail, um, as well as a writer's retreat. It was a writer's retreat, so I went with this group of writers and a couple of established authors who were guiding us through the whole thing. And it was a really interesting experience. Um, but that's just not, it's just not the way that I travel. I don't really like traveling in that way, I guess. Where, like, it's just, you know, one person kind of leading group and telling you, okay, you go here, you go there, now you do this, now you do that. Um, it's just, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. Uh, but that's not to say that it's not for a lot of other people. I'm sure other people will, you know... Uh, really enjoy that that style of travel and all that um, and just I, I've been so involved or not involved but like obsessed with uh, I've been watching a lot of leftist YouTube lately and that can really get you down when you're you know being pretentious and out there uh, spending money that could be better spent elsewhere, probably. Uh, it's just, um, a lot of that leftist guilt and all that. But, you know, uh, overall, I'm glad that I went. I would definitely go back to Oaxaca again. I just don't think that I would go on a writer's retreat like that. It, it, at least for the, at least for the near future. Um... Especially to, like, a country that's more impoverished than my own. And, I, like, I, by no means is Oaxaca even that impoverished of a city overall. It's just more impoverished than where I live. And it's just, um... Yeah, yeah like, um... One of the... <sighs> one of the gals went on a Tinder date with a guy who lives in Oaxaca and he was saying that um, the restaurants in the Zocalo, which is like the, the main city square, um, the restaurants there purposefully seat darker skinned individuals in the back of the restaurant and lighter skinned up on the patio because they want the white tourists to feel more welcomed and to come in and eat there. And just like knowing that and and knowing the di the dynamics of everything, it just made me intensely uncomfortable. Uh for for participating like you know for for going in eating at the at some of the restaurants before I knew that that's what they were doing you know it's just um yeah yeah hey kablam welcome um oh thanks <laughs> yeah yeah <sighs> the book is a work in progress I I've got a bunch of stuff written out um but I, do, I don't want to just like put out a book for the sake of putting out a book I want it to be uh, you know, worth reading. I want it to be really good. <laughs> I want it to be uh, engaging and captivating. Um, not just because of the story, but also because of the writing itself. And so, uh, it, it might it might still be like a year or two, you know, uh, before I actually get everything all 
figured out. But, uh, oh hey, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. But overall, you know, life's good. Um, yeah, yeah. Life's good. I had a fun time in Orlando recently as well, visiting some uh, friends and family out there. Went to Disney World. Another one of those that like, oof, oof, the leftist guilt. The leftist guilt of going to Disney World and participating in that. Ugh. I feel like I could just have like a, a whole channel on YouTube called I Feel Guilty. Just all the ways that I'm sure the book will, I'm sure everything will be good. I'm excited. Oh, I'm working on sort of a longer one today. I'm adding some kind of Oaxacan style things. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really want to do like political commentary, but just uh, general, social comment. I love watching YouTube videos and I have a lot of judgmental opinions, so I might as well share them. <laughs> but yeah, so this is kind of the style I'm going for on this guy. It's gonna be part of the same series. The lighting in here is not the greatest, but thank you. I'm really, I was really inspired by the uh, Alabrijes in Oaxaca. Alabrije is a kind of a wooden totem. Car it's a carved wooden totem that's painted, uh, usually hand painted, um, in this sort of style with a lot of uh, bold, bold colors, bold designs. A lot of floral, um, and dot, a lot of dot work, too, which we'll be getting to later on. I just thought they were so cool. Did you find out what yours is? I did! Mine was the, uh, the Koati. I think a Kawati, the, um, uh, what are they, like a marsupial? Or, or not marsupial, it's a mammal of some kind. I haven't figured out yet how to uh, put this on here, but. <laughs> Yeah! Oh yeah, they're in Brazil! <laughs> yeah, they're um, uh, in the like southern US and throughout Mexico as well. So... I guess that's my... My alabrije. I really like painting because it's very... Um, this is very meditative for me. Very repetitive and you just kind of get into a flow. I like it. That was what I liked about uh, hiking a lot too when I was doing my, my long distance hikes. It's just that the flow that your body gets into um, when you've been walking for so long. It's funny because on my first through hike, it took me like two or three weeks to really 
get into that flow. And I kept hearing people talk about eventually. Eventually there's a time that you just don't even realize you're walking. Um, that, that took me like 1200 miles before I got to a point where I like, just sometimes didn't realize I was walking. Um, but it's it's been interesting because that's actually held over post trail where i mean even when i went to um disney world with my friend you know i was just walking around all day i didn't even notice i was walking walking is just kind of a, a default state for me in the same way that like standing or sitting is just kind of a, a default state that your body just exists in for me yeah walking is just kind of eh. meditative now. Oof, this flower did not turn out very well. It's okay. We will make it work. sets in very soon of that like you know what did I sign up for what am I doing why am I being so stupid why am I out here all of that starts running through the mind right away but like I feel like around week two or especially week three and you know by month two especially you just get into that mindset of this is my life this is, this is my life now you know that this is this is what I do is I, I wake up with the sun and I pack up my tent and I walk um, and sometimes I eat and a lot of times I drink <laughs> or smoke or hang out with people and um, and, you, and you just keep walking the, I don't know, the, the, the hardest parts of trail for me were like the first two weeks on trail and then the third week after I came home. Because the first two weeks when you first get home after trail and after you just like committed yourself to this mindset of this is what I do now this is how I live now <sighs> adjusting to back home at first it feels like a little vacation from that of just ooh I'm, I'm taking a break from my routine and doing something a little different and then by week three it really sets in of oh oh no this is my life now It 
it's it's not trail anymore. Like this is my life. And that can be hard for a lot of people. Uh, when I, I mean, when I first, when I ended my first trail, it was so difficult for me um, that I actually went out and hiked another one. Just that, that transition back to, back to normal was too much for me. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a weird time. Hiking is is weird, um, but the the life that we have all normalized, or <laughs> the life that we all consider normal, is also pretty weird. So the toughest part is just transitioning between the two. At least in my experience. yesterday when I hear a certain song or apologize that this is not as chipper and uh, cheerful as a lot of my previous content has been. The, uh, the longest day I did on trail is 36 miles. That was on the Appalachian Trail uh, heading into Damascus, Virginia. I had wanted to do the Damascathon, so you call it, when you do a marathon day, you know, the 26 point whatever, going into Damascus. And things just didn't work out properly the night before, ended up camping too early, and uh, was dumb enough to just go for it anyway. <laughs> uh, so, when, you know, we woke up at like 4.30 or 5 a.m. or something. I don't want to say like 4 a.m. Um, packed up the tent, you know, protein bar for breakfast. Near the 
end, we were thinking like, yeah, and one day. Yeah, yeah. And I had realized that I had already done 20 miles by lunchtime. That's when I knew like, okay, I'm definitely making this today. But those, the last like five were definitely the worst five because you just know like, oh, I'm so close, I'm so close to town. And especially like the last couple of miles were just switchbacks. Just like <sighs> switching back, getting into town is always the worst. back and forth and back and forth down the mountain. You know, you're so close to town and you can hear all the traffic. You just can't quite get there. You just step, step, burger, beer, burger, beer. <laughs> all I want is a burger, beer, burger, beer. <laughs> Crazy.